Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, October 29th, I believe. I hope I got that right. And it is a nice fall day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Yesterday was unbelievable. It was, it was in the 80s yesterday. Uh, bizarre for this time of year. But beautiful, sunny day. Got, uh, got a lot of work done outside. Really, really enjoyed myself yesterday. Uh, today, cooler, 60s, cloudy, showers. That's okay. I got nothing to do today except go get some groceries, which I'm going to do as soon as this is finished. In fact, I'm going to take myself out to breakfast because I'm a bachelor right now, so why not? Uh, wife returns on Wednesday, so yeah, we're, we're, we'll, we'll be happily reunited again, but then all kinds of nonsense happens. I'll talk more about that next week. There's going to be a lot of traveling for both of us. Anyway, um... Enjoying my Jesse Jones Halloween pipe, which I affectionately call Bela. Unfortunately, I left Renfield upstairs, so you don't get to see Renfield. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. We'll use uh, ah, we will use <clears throat> Larry Blackett's uh, skull and bones, the, the, the skeletal hand holding the skull. I love that. That's just a cool damper. And uh, this will be the last Halloween video. I know, I've done a few. I hope you don't think I've overdone it. If you haven't had a chance to see my special Halloween video, I posted it on Thursday. And it's gotten some really nice responses so far. It's been, uh, been fairly popular, so happy about that. Uh, I just sort of present my five favorite pipe smoking moments in monster movies. So, if you're interested... I'll try to remember to link it below. Uh, also, there's a playlist that I'll also try to remember to link below of all my Halloween videos. And I've got some, I think I did a pretty good job on some of them. I, I really like the one I did on uh, Lugosi. And it doesn't get many views, so I'd rather see folks watch that than watch the darn corncob pipe videos. But those are always at the top. I guess I should make more corncob pipe videos. Anyway. <laughs> So I made a video <clears throat> about the top five favorite pipe smoking moments in monster movies. That's on, it came out on Thursday. We had a great live stream on Friday night. We did Halloween trivia. It was a lot of fun. Uh, of course, half the fun is uh, the answers that, that you see in the, in the comments, which are quite hilarious at times and, and, and intentionally. So I'm not making fun of people here. Uh, so one of the questions was a a bat is the only mammal that can do what what which of the following and then there were uh, four multiple choice so it's it's things like uh, sleep upside down fly hunt by sonar you know and uh, you know I'm giving them the multiple cho at first I tried to do it without the multiple choice and nobody was getting it so I started to give the multiple choice and as I'm doing that I see. I believe it was Eric Blue Collar Pipe Smoker posted Fight Crime. <laughs> That's Fighting Crime, yes. So I'm still laughing at that, Eric. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was a good time. So This will be the last Halloween video of the year. So Bela goes back into his crypt the day after Halloween. I continue to smoke on a bookshop in Bela and enjoy the heck out of it. Jesse Jones makes a nice pipe. And, uh, mm. It's good engineering and pretty. Oh, I think it's pretty. All right, so <clears throat> I thought it'd be fun today to to sort of reminisce with you a bit about some early Halloween costumes. And I don't have a lot of good memories of, of this. Uh, well, not not that they're bad memories. I just don't mem remember them well. But I'm going back to. What I like to think of as the golden years. So there's five years difference between myself and my sister, who's the middle child. So for five years, for five glorious years, I was an only child. And I probably only remember the last year of that, of course, but it seems like I remember more than that. I very clearly remember my mom being in the hospital when my sister was born uh, because she actually got 
she got jaundice and had to stay in the hospital for like a couple of weeks. And so my dad was taking care of me and stuff. And it was just different. So I remember that. He did a fine job, but by today's standards, it would probably be considered child abuse just because of the way he fed me. Not, not He didn't do anything abusive, but uh, yeah, we, we ate uh, not very healthy during those weeks. Anyway, uh, for Halloween, during that time, my grandfather was very involved. Uh, well, my, my grandparents were very involved in my, in my early life. Uh, we lived, oh, probably about 10 blocks away from them in, in South Philadelphia. So it was an easy walk, plenty of sidewalks and stuff. And, you know, so I'd see them most days, probably, uh, you know, probably at least five days a week. And my grandfather was still working, but for some reason, and I don't quite know the reason, uh, he would take me trick or treating. I'm guessing it's because he wanted to, and you know, it's the kind of thing he would enjoy doing with his grandson. And at the time I was, uh, I was the only grandchild, I believe. I had an older cousin, but he passed away. Yeah, so I think I was the only grandchild at the time. And yeah, so I think it was just because he wanted to. But in addition to that, I, I, I kind of think it was the kind of thing my dad wouldn't want to do. And I'm, I see nothing wrong with that because if, if I had kids, I'd be in the same boat. I. I don't like kids. I'm sorry. I, I know that sounds awful, but I'm I'm just not that kind of guy. Uh, so it's a it's a blessing that uh, you know God never blessed us with children because I don't know that I would have been a great dad. I probably would be a great grandfather or older dad, but during the formative years of the kids' lives, I, I don't know that I would have been very really good. And I think my dad was kind of like that. My mom balanced it out, so everything was fine. But, uh, yeah, my grandfather took us trick-or-treating, took me trick-or-treating, and then later my sister and my brother. So, I can remember some of the costumes and the way they were goofy. You know, this was back when, uh, but there, there was something nice about this. This was back when, you know, you had a plastic mask with an elastic band around the back of it. And I could still see these things. They were like a, uh, a woven cord, a very thin woven uh, casing around what was uh, probably a, a, a rubber uh, core, and it would stretch. And at the ends of them were these little silver tags, so they made a T. So you'd have this stringy, stretchy material, and then this silver uh, metal tag going across like this. And you would push that through these little holes in the plastic mask. And the, you know, the tea would pop open and hold it so that you could put the elastic around your head and have the mask stuck to your face. The masks were made of this very thin plastic, which tended to crack easily. Um, they were basically cartoon images on, on the fronts. I mean, they were garish at times. Uh, nothing gory, nothing over the top, nothing even remotely frightening. I mean, the most frightening one was probably a ghost with his mouth open, you know. Um, but we'd have, you know, vampires and Frankenstein monster. And, uh, I remember the one, the earliest one I can remember is, is a, uh, astronaut. And what I, the reason this sticks out in my memory is there was a little light in the, in the mask, just a little, uh, incandescent bulb, like you'd find in a flashlight was mounted up in the, in the top of that mask. And then there were wires that ran down your back to a battery pack. And it was actually a D-cell battery that you had to like put in a pocket somewhere or something. Uh, and, uh, oh, I thought that was the coolest thing. I had a light on my helmet and, you know, the, the actual body was just this plastic, I don't even know what the material was, material was, but a very uh, sort of slick, slick light plastic material and it was printed and there were the, the astronaut was primarily white it might have had like a belt and like a yellow band or something maybe a nasa logo or something i don't remember but uh 
Did I say yellow? Blue. I remember there, it was white and blue. I remember that. The helmet was white with some blue accents on it. It might have had the word NASA on it. I don't know. I looked for a picture of this, and I couldn't find anything that looked right. So, uh, anyway, that's the earliest Halloween costume I can remember. And I know I had others. I know I had ghosts and, and, and Dracula. Uh, I had Spider-Man. I went through a Spider-Man phase when I was a kid. Uh, To the extent that I, I remember clearly one night being terrified that Spider-Man was going to come into my bedroom, which is kind of weird because I viewed him as a hero, but I just got myself really worked up over this. And that was the first, I can remember my mother letting me leave the light on. It's interesting. It's the only real memory I have of like not being able to go to sleep. Anyway, I digress. So my brother and sister came along and they sort of took on those kinds of costumes, which were still being made. They might still be made today. And that sort of started to be childish to me. So I wanted to do the more homemade dress up type things that some of my friends were doing. And I remember uh, Abe Lincoln was one that I did one year. Uh, and of course, you know, when you're that age, you, you look in the mirror and you see what you want to see. And I was the spitting image of Abe Lincoln, uh, even though I was, you know, maybe three foot tall. Uh, the other one that I very clearly remember is I wanted to be Dracula. And I don't know how this happened. I think my aunt might have been involved. My aunt and my uncle, who were unmarried at the time and still living with my grandparents, would often help out for school projects or Halloween costumes. And it might have been the work of my aunt on this one, or it might have been my mother. But to make me Dracula, I got I had the plastic fangs, which were ubiquitous back then. I don't know why we don't have them. Probably can't trust kids to not swallow them. The plastic fangs, there was probably some makeup, uh, just my aunt's makeup that she used on me. And then the, and, and a white shirt and a, and a cape. I remember that, and the, the, the crowning glory of this costume was she took out a jar of Vaseline and slicked my hair back so that I had the V in the front, and I my hair was, was saturated with Vaseline. And I remember thinking I looked really cool, and you know, I looked exactly like Bela Lugosi. Uh, didn't know who Bela Lugosi was at the time, but I looked exactly like Dracula and I was going to scare people and I was going to get my candy in. And my grandfather's taking me around and, and we would always go to visit the, um, the convent and the, um, the priest house at the, at the church because it was more of a social thing than anything. Um, but the nuns would make, um, would make Halloween treats because they, they were under a vow of poverty so they couldn't go out and buy a box of candy so they would make Halloween treats and they they loved to make popcorn balls and if you have never had a popcorn ball consider yourself lucky I don't know what binds them together something sweet it's a ball of popcorn about this big and it's bound together by what I guess is some sort of sugar maybe caramelized sugar solution but they didn't have the they didn't have the pleasant flavor of caramel. They, they, they just tasted like stale sugar and popcorn in, 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 in a hard ball form. But people, it, they were popular back then. I mean, I didn't just get them from the nuns. People would hand them out at Halloween. We'd get apples. We'd get little bags of candy twisted up in, in like uh, uh, aluminum foil, like, like somebody bought boxed candy and put two pieces with aluminum foil and uh, we get little bags of pennies all sorts of stuff it was great it was wonderful so I go into the convent with my grandfather and the nuns there one of these scary nuns that probably was my math teacher and she leans down and says oh who do we have here and you know they're trying to be they're trying to play along with the kids you know like I don't recognize you that sort of thing and I said, I am Count Dracula. And she said, oh, Dracula, that's very scary. And, and I can still see her eyes as she says this to me. She's, 
she's kneeling down and she's got a hand on my shoulder and she's you know being very very kind to pretend along with me and then she just like kind of breaks out of that character and she says this was a sunday night michael your mother's gonna have a long night getting that vaseline out of your hair in time for school tomorrow <laughs> And I can so clearly remember that. Ah, uh, and she did. She did. There were many washings. Uh, <laughs> it took a long time to get that out of my hair. But yes, yes, early Halloween costume. Quite a bit of fun. The plastic ones you'd want to keep all year because, hey, who wouldn't want to dress up like an astronaut every day? But... They, they would crack over time. They might have even been, uh, I don't think they were biodegradable, but they certainly weren't made to last. Good times. Anyway, folks, I need to go get myself some breakfast and uh, get on with my day. So I'll finish this up. I do have coffee. I've, I've been neglecting it. Some of you are probably thinking at this point I needed it before I started talking, but <clears throat> have a great day. Have a happy Halloween. Have a fantastic week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.